Most of us think about growing fruits and vegetables in our backyard. We're boasting about the size of our zucchinis or else we're moaning about the amount of green tomatoes still left on the vine. But some people are finding ways to be more adventurous and they are buzzing and cackling about ways to be gorge grown. Backyard beekeeping is on the rise. Many of us think we don't have the time or skill to keep bees, not to mention the proper apparel. A beekeeping soup is designed to avoid the obvious, getting stung. Backyard beekeeper Jim Schlemmer says he usually doesn't get stung if he moves nice and slow. But honeybees are not always the focused workers they appear to be in this hive. Some are very aggressive. I have a hive at a friend's house that uh, I went in there with the sole purpose to, to kill the queen. Um, but I couldn't find her. The hive was so aggressive towards me. Oh, I probably pulled out 20 to 30 stingers out of my jeans. These bees were not very active. The weather was cooler, which helps. And a smoker calmed the bees by fooling them into thinking the hive is on fire. So they gorge themselves on honey in case they need to move to another location where they can convert it into beeswax to start a new comb. Jim is a fan of what he called a top bar hive, an arrangement which made a lot of sense. I mean, like this weighs probably about, this probably weighs about seven, eight pounds right here. Where if this box was full, to lift that to get below would be about 80 to, nine, 80 to 100 pounds. Top bar hives are a lot easier to handle, and even three of the bars would net Jim around 30 pounds of honey. He obviously has a lot more bars than that, and a lot more bees. He says you can start beekeeping with about 80 to 90 bees with a queen. But in this hive, Jim estimates he has somewhere around 25 to 30,000 bees. That's another worthy goal of backyard beekeeping, helping to preserve our bee population, which has been declining due to many environmental factors. And also one of the big things that's stressing out bees is that these great big giant monocultures of almonds and other types of um, sunflowers where you have square miles of just one particular type of fruit or vegetable and when that's done blooming there's nothing else around so the bees um, have to go somewhere else and if there's nothing else or if that's where their home is then they have to fly further longer to get whatever they need as far as uh, food. Jim says bees in the Columbia River Gorge have plenty of food sources and that the honey is flavored by what's blooming during the different seasons, such as blackberries, clover, or certain flowers. This is all honey, oh my goodness. and this is not. So just, just eat it, and then just, just, just kind of huh? just bite into it, kind of chew it, and uh, just mm. chew it, suck out the wax, and, or suck wow. out the honey, and then just spit it out. Oh my goodness. And then the stuff, I can give you a little sample inside there, but oh. it is... Nothing, nothing like you, you'd buy in a store. I love bees now. <laughs> One taste and I was convinced backyard bees are worth their weight in honey. And according to Jim, the time and effort you need to spend on bees is about the same as growing veggies. 10, 15 hours a month, depending on how much you want to learn. And the initial investment is maybe a couple hundred bucks, tops. And then at the end of all that, um, Come August, you'll have about, depending upon how many frames they fill up, between probably two to five gallons of honey hmm. wow. for your first year. But bees aren't the okay. only producers in this backyard. Jim and his family also keep backyard chickens. Come on, girls. Chickens really don't require all that much setup. A protected coop to sleep in at night, chicken food, which isn't very expensive, and fresh water. You'll also need to fence off a bit of your yard unless you have a not-so-manicured garden and they can free range. Jim generally keeps his in this pen. They like green grass. They love to scratch around your yard looking for whatever bugs they can find. Uh, if, if they can free range, they like it best. If not, then they need a, a penned area that they can roam in without getting the area too messy. Most people think of getting chickens for the farm fresh eggs, but Jim's chickens have work to do. They are his live composting machine. But I can have a, a mound this high of grass clippings, and they will pick through it, get all the bugs, get all the grass clippings, and they will spread it all around. 
and then I'll mix in some some dirt with it and some leaves and sawdust and um, you know within a couple of months it goes right around on all the fruit trees and all of the you know back into the garden and this is just great mulch with the nitrogen from their droppings so chickens can do a lot of the dirty job of composting if you want to put them to work and contrary to popular myth, you do not need a rooster to get eggs. Hens are very productive all on their own. Jim was just borrowing a rooster for a couple of weeks to try and make chicks. That was our goal, was to, uh, our, our rooster on loan was to try to raise some chicks, but our, uh, our chickens, our hens, do not like the rooster on loan. So I don't think there'll be any chicks in the future. So for now, it's just eggs, which Jim has a way of cashing in for other items. And then we get so many eggs sometimes that we, we uh, barter with friends. A couple of friends who are in the wine business, a couple of friends who are in the beer business. <laughs> so we, we, we trade with them. So whether it's egg producing or composting, chickens can earn their keep. And that's something which would give any backyard hobbyist something to crow about. There are other ways to be gorge grown. When we come back, we'll find out about a school that converted some of its play yard into a place where fertile young minds can grow.